Hello, my lovely friends. My name is Ava, and today we're gonna to be talking about all the books that I've read so far in May. It is May 15th, it's about halfway through the month, so I thought I'd talk about the 17 books that I've read so far. Quite a few of these books were read during uh, readathons. There was the Mafia Romance Readathon and the Historical Romance Readathon that happened at the beginning of May. If you want my in depth thoughts for some of these books, they're going to be in those reading vlogs. So if you haven't watched those reading vlogs, you can go watch them now, but um, I'll tell y'all when I get to the book which books are in those reading blogs. So first book that I read in May was Iron Giant by Cassie Mint. This is one of her newer releases. This one is a novella. If you don't know about Cassie Mint, she writes novellas that are really fun and hot. Um, so this is a romance between Gwen and Reese. Gwen is the daughter of a farmer who lives next to Reese and Reese is a blacksmith. There is a big age gap between the two, but that doesn't stop them from hardcore pining for one another. The heroine is always kind of like looking in his little blacksmith shop, like while she's Picking, picking blackberries on like the land that they're on. I did however feel lost sometimes reading this because there was just a bunch of time jumps that weren't explained all that much. Like we'd be in a chapter and then the next paragraph would be like, well, two weeks later we were doing this. I don't personally like that in books where it jumps times that much, you know, um, without much explanation. Like I'm okay with it happening at like beginning of chapters, but in the middle of a chapter, it's a little daunting and jarring, if that makes sense. It's not my favorite casting mint, but I really did enjoy it. Um, and there's also a certain scene involving blackberries that was 10 out of 10 recommend. <laughs> um, so the tropes in here, you have Age Gap, it's on Kindle Unlimited. There's longing between the two characters and it is a novella. I ended up giving this book a 3.5 out of five stars. Next, I read an alien romance called Tron by Lena Gray and Juno Wells. I read this one because I really wanted to read a barbarian alien romance. I of course love Ice Planet Barbarians. I have some in my collection, obviously. They're one of my favorite series of all time. So I literally like searched on Amazon, barbarian alien romance. <laughs> and so this is one of the ones that popped up. It just wasn't it. I don't think like anything can beat IPB at this point for me, like, or Ruby Dixon in general. Like she's just the goddess and like anything else is kind of like a letdown. So uh, this is the romance between Kenzie and Tron. Kenzie and a few other college students end up crash landing on an abandoned planet. Like they're on this journey to visit 12 planets in 12 months. Like that's a part of their college program. But then their spaceship ends up crashing on this one planet. And they think this planet is abandoned, but it's not. Um, she ends up meeting the Rakui warriors, and one of them claims her as his mate. Um, his name's Tron. Um, and so I felt like this one was just like, okay. I've just read so many alien romances that are way better than this, honestly. It just fell like flat. I was really confused what was going on with other rogues that were on the planet that weren't like Rakui warriors. There were some other type of people. I don't know. Um, I don't know if they're aliens or humans or what they are, but like, there was just so, there's like still so many questions at the end of this that I was like, why even put that in the book? And I also don't th feel like the romance was developed enough for these two to say I love you at the end. I was like, makes zero sense to me, zero sense. So I gave this like a 2.5 out of five stars. It was okay. I then reread a favorite of mine, <laughs> speaking of Ruby Dixon, I reread Fire in His Blood, the first book in the Flyer Blood, oh, can't speak, Flyer Blood? Fire Blood Dragon series. Um, I was just reading this book um, while I fell asleep. If you have Libby or Audible or something, there's like a sleep timer you can use where um, like you can like set like a timer for like an hour or 30 minutes or however long you want. And then the audiobook will like stop after that point. And so, cause I know that a lot of people fall asleep listening to audiobooks. So I always sleep with my audiobook sleep timer on when I want to fall asleep. So anyway, this is her first book in her Fireblood Dragon series. This is a post-apocalyptic alien dragon shifter romance series. So Claudia here lives in Fort Dallas. So in this time on earth, uh, there's like a rift that opened up in the sky and dragons started flying through and kind of like decimating the earth. There's only a few human camps here and there um, that have survived. So Fort Dallas is one of them. And Claudia lives in Fort Dallas, but she kind of like broke a law. And so the mayor of Fort Dallas decides to offer her up as dragon bait, not knowing that She's actually the mate to one of the dragons. She doesn't know it either, but the dragon can shift into a humanoid form. And he claims Claudia as his mate. And there's a bunch of other stuff that goes on here too, but I love this series a lot. It is just so much fun. Um, I gave it four stars on my reread. I, I enjoy my time. I then read Broken Vow by Sophie Lark. This is the fifth book in the Brutal Birthright series, her mafia romance series. Um, and this one is between Riona and um, 
is it Raylan? Raylan. Raylan. I was about to say Kaylin. I don't know why. Um, Raylan and Riona and Riona is a lawyer and she, someone's out to kill her and Raylan has been tasked to be her bodyguard and the two of them fall in love. I don't want to go too deep into my thoughts with this one because this is going to be my five star prediction reading vlog that I'm going to be posting towards the end of the year probably. I have like 12 or 11 books that I said at the beginning of the year I thought would be five stars and so this was one of them. And so you can wait for that video to see what I rated it or you could just go check my Goodreads honestly. <laughs> um, but I love this. I love this couple and I can't wait to see them hopefully in the Kingmaker series maybe they pop up or their kids do. I don't know but um, I really love this. I love Raylan and um, it's just cowboy attitude as a Texan. I love cute cowboys. So and this was really fun. I love the grumpy sunshine aspect too, where the hero is the sunshine and the heroine's the grump. For trigger warnings in here, you have near-death experience, death, murder, knives, near drowning, drugging, drugging, and guns. Um, for tropes, you have it's a bodyguard romance, there's cowboys, great banter, grumpy sunshine with a grumpy heroine and a sunshine hero. A hero falls first, it's on Kendall Unlimited. There's a near-death experience, a nightmare savior, Raylan saves Riona during a nightmare of hers. Um, it's a mafia romance and it's part of a sibling series. The next three books I read during the Mafia Romance Readathon. And so most of my thoughts for these books will be in the vlog that is on my channel. I'll link it down below um, where I read Mafia Romances for I think it was four days. First one I read was Heavy Crown by Sophie Lark. This is the sixth book in the Brutal Birthright series, the last book. This is the romance between Sebastian and Yelena and it's kind of like a rivaling families romance too because Yelena is uh, the daughter to the head of the Russian mafia, the Bratva, and um, Sebastian is the son to the head of, I believe it's the Italian. I don't know if it's the Italian or the Irish mafia. I don't know, whatever the case may be, these two families are rivaling against each other. Yelena and Sebastian end up falling in love, but there's some secrets and stuff going on. So if you want to know my thoughts um, about this book in real time when I read it, go check out that vlog. For trigger warnings in here, I have mafia, guns, violence, death, shootings, blood, familial death, sexual assault, and familial abuse. Um, tropes, you have big city romance. It takes place in Chicago. Um, a damaged hero, forbidden romance, a foreigner, the heroine is from Russia. It's on Kidot Unlimited, it's a mafia romance. Um, the heroine is a musician, she plays the piano. Rivaling families, tall heroine, and there was a wedding. So yeah, I ended up giving this one a four out of five stars. Asteroid Rapture and Ruin by Julia Sykes. This is a stalker mafia romance. Our hero in here was severely burned and scarred. And he believes that the mayor of whatever town they're in, I don't know what town it is, teamed up with the Russian mafia to take down his family, which is the Italian mafia. He wants retribution, so he kidnaps the mayor's daughter. Mayor's daughter knows nothing about what is going on. And um, he soon realizes that and just releases her and then starts stalking her. Also, by the way, this is this does end on a cliffhanger. So um, I think the next book is out, though, if you want to check it out. Um, trick warnings in here, attempted sexual assault, bullying, kidnapping, mafia, murder. Tropes, Captor Captive, Damaged Hero, Forbidden Romance, Kidnapping, Mafia, Rivaling Families, and Scarred Character. Again, you can know more of my thoughts in that reading vlog. I gave this one a 3.5 out of 5 stars. And then the last book that I ended up reading for the Mafia Romance Readathon was Ivan by Sophie Lark. This is her first book in the Underworld series. It's another one of her Mafia Romance series. This is a romance between Ivan and Sloan. Sloan is a American woman who's in, I think it's St. Petersburg in Russia somewhere. Um, and she has been tasked to assassinate and kill Ivan, one of the leaders of the Russian mafia. And then he ends up like kind of like catching her in the act and kidnapping her and keeping her in his house and trying to get information out of her. So for trigger warnings in this one, you have mafia, death, murder, blood, bombs, kidnapping, and assassination. <laughs> um, tropes, Assassin turned lover, captor captive, Kindle Unlimited, Mafia, and near death experience. I ended up giving this one a four out of five stars. Immediately after finishing Ivan, I decided just to have like a little bit of a palate cleanser. And so I picked up one of the Misadventures books that I haven't read yet, which is book 10, Misadventures of a Rookie by Tony Aleo. This is my second Tony Aleo I've tried to read. I don't like her writing. I am not a fan, which is not something I say a lot of with authors. Like, Sometimes there's like a book here and there that I'll like, um, but normally like I love almost all the authors that I read, like their writing at least. I have not liked Tony Aleo. I tried to read one of her other hockey books. 
immediately after two chapters I was like this is insufferable like the way that these off these these characters talk to each other and their inner monologue is insane like I I can't stand it I had to push my way through my city adventures of a rookie like I had to push myself through this because only like a five hour audiobook I was like why not just finish it whatever I almost DNF'd it like three times I'm not, I've realized I'm not a fan of Tony Leo at all, which is nothing against her. I bet she's an amazing person. I just don't vibe well with her. And that happens a lot with books, with authors. And so like, I know that some people don't like Sarah J Mass's writing and the way that she writes her books. I personally love it. I know that some people love Tony Leo. I do not. <laughs> I don't want to say I hated it because I didn't necessarily hate it. I hated the other book I tried to read by her. This one, it's, it was okay. Um, I didn't really care for either of these characters. Our hero, Gus, who is kind of like a ladies man. He gets every girl that he wants. He's like a wham bam thinking man kind of guy. He never sleeps with the same girl twice. He ends up, of course, meeting this one girl named um, Bo who changes everything for him. He tries to like woo her or whatever. And then once he realizes that she's not gonna get with him because she doesn't get with guys who just sleep with women and are done, like she doesn't want that. He's like, well, I'm gonna make her change her mind. This guy, I wanna say something about him, but I'm not gonna use bad language. <laughs> he warmed up to me at the end, kind of, kind of. The beginning, god awful. Like, I cannot stand men that are like that. I can't, I can't, ant, ant, can't stand it. I literally wrote in my summary, the last sentence of my, of my uh, review is, it was insufferable to be in his head at the beginning since he was a huge playboy and constantly objectify women. How is that attractive to somebody? Like a woman with a man constantly objectifying women. Like, how can you like a hero like this? I don't get it at all. I do not at all. And then Bo just like got on my nerves a lot too. And just like a bunch of things in here I did not care for whatsoever. And I normally don't rant this much about a book. I'm not a negative Nancy, like I don't, but like this book is like the first book in a while that has really grinded my gears, so. I gave this book 2.5 stars to be generous, but this was more like a one star, two star book for me, unfortunately. <laughs> and then all the rest of these books I read during the Historical Romance Readathon. So if you wanna know more thoughts about these books, that vlog will be linked down below for you to watch. I ended up reading Until Midnight by Maya Banks. This is one of her vault romances. This is her romances that take place in like London society. So our heroine here, Lady Jenna, um, she's been in an arranged marriage with this guy for a while. And as she's gotten to know him, she's like, this guy's never gonna give me the passion that I want out of a marriage. So I'm going to knock on this renowned rake's renowned renowned rake's door and propose that he and i have a affair together before i have to get married and so that's what she does and they end up falling in love with each other i gave this one three stars it was okay if you want to know more of my thoughts and the rest of these books more thoughts on the other books go check out the historical romance reading vlog that's linked down below i then dnf'd did not finish uh the duke i once knew by olivia drake i won't talk about this book too much because i went on a big rant in my vlog so if you want to watch that, go watch the vlog. Um, I hated this hero. It's one of the worst heroes I have ever, 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 ever read about in a historical. That's it. <laughs> I then got into the Kate Bateman hole. <laughs> I read This Earl of Mine, the first book in the Bow Street Bachelor series. Um, this is a romance between Georgiana and Benedict. Georgie's one of the richest women in London and um, this cousin of hers is trying to get her in a compromising position with him so that uh, she can be forced to marry him and so she can he can inherit all of her money, but she does not want that. And so she goes and marries a man on death row thinking that he will die and then she'll be a widow and then she'll be safe from any person trying to force themselves on her. Little does she know that, that the guy that she marries on death row is undercover in the jail. Um, his name is Benedict and he is also in society. So she goes to a ball one day and she sees her husband there that she thought was dead. <laughs> For tropes in here, you have fake dating, hidden identity, historical romance, marriage of convenience, a married couple romance, and there's a wedding. I gave this book a 3.5 out of 5 stars. And if you want to know more of my thoughts, go check out the reading vlog, of course. I also read book two in the series, which is To Catch an Earl. This is the romance between Alex and Emmy. I liked this one a little bit more than book one, just because book one had a bunch of things going on with the side plot that I didn't really take uh, much 
interesting. Uh, but Emmy in here is actually a jewel thief and Alex is the guy trying to find the jewel thief and the two of them fall in love, but she's a jewel thief and he's working with the police. And so there's a bunch of things going on in there. <laughs> Four tropes in here, it's forbidden. Uh, someone has a hidden identity, Emmy does. Um, it's a historic romance. It's a historic romance with disability representation. Alex is a war veteran with a, a vision impairment, so he can't see out of one of his eyes, like not completely. Um, like he can't see like, like in his peripheral vision, I don't think out of one of his eyes. Um, so it is a romance with disability representation. This book has a stuck in an in scene. So yeah, <laughs> I know that was a fan favorite. So I like this one. I gave it a four out of five stars. And of course, if you want to know more of my thoughts, go check out that reading vlog. Another Kate Bateman that I found on my uh, Libby is A Clear Midnight, which is like a 14 page novella. This is about Tatiana who's been in love with her best friend's uh, her brother's best friend Alex for a while but he's been off at war for two years and Tatiana is now stuck in the snow while traveling to London to find or to meet up with her brother and Alex after they've been done with war and stuff um, but she gets snowed in at this one place and so Alex decides to go uh, trek through the snow to go find her and reveal his feelings because he also has feelings for Tatiana so um, this was adorable I just wanted more this would make an amazing full-length book there's a lot of talk of Russian folklore and specifically like the Russian ice princess I think that's what like Elsa from Frozen was inspired from this was just would have made an amazing full-length novel I want to read a quote for you because it's so good I'm starting to put like memorable quotes in my Goodreads review so Tatiana thought that Alex hated her by the way so that's why she's never really revealed her feelings um and so he says Oh, I've never hated you. I've hated every time you danced with someone other than myself. I've hated every man who ever made you laugh. I've hated the months I've had to be away from you fighting this stupid war. And I've hated myself for never having the guts to tell you that what I feel for you is the furthest you can possibly get from hate. Oh my goodness. <laughs> that quote alone gave this four stars. <laughs> um, tropes in here. Is Brother's Best Friend, Novella, Snowstorm, and it is a winter read. I also read The Princess and the Rogue, which is the third book in the Bow Street Blackshirt series. And I love this one. This is an Anastasia retelling. This is the romance between Anya or Anastasia and Sebastian. And yeah, the book starts out with like Sebastian going to this brothel um, and he immediately sees Anya and he's like, I'll pay anything to get with you for the night, you know? And she's like, I actually don't work here. She teaches uh the women who work at the brothel how to read and so that's why she's there and though and so he kisses her thinking that like oh i'm gonna hire this woman to be with me and she's like no and she walks away and he wow. doesn't know who this woman is <laughs> and so the rest of it is like an anastasia retelling she's a long lost princess sebastian is trying to protect her from some evil man who's trying to kill her or kidnap her all that stuff. I love this one. I really recommend it, but I also recommend reading the other books before this one because you get introduced to Sebastian in the other books too, and it just it's a little better uh, if you read the other books first. Tropes in here, you have great banter, hidden slash secret identity, historical romance, historical romance with disability rep. The hero is also a war veteran and he's hard of hearing in one of his ears. This is a memorable meet cute, like the scene in the brothel. <laughs> one of the characters is reluctant to love. It's a retelling, a retelling of Anastasia and uh, a romance with disability rep and it is a royalty romance. I ended up giving this book a five out of five stars. If you want to know more of my thoughts, go check out that reading vlog. I also read The Marquess and I by Stacey Reed. This is her first book in the Forever Yours series. I just want a novella. To, I wanted a novella to read, so this is only like 130 pages long. Um, this is the romance between Lady Willow and Alistair. Alist Alistair? Alistar. I never know how to say that name. The two of them fell in love when they were back in their early 20s, but Willow's family forbade him from, forbade her from marrying Alistair because he was not a title man. It is years later, the, um, he's now, he does have a title now because the rest of his family caught, I believe, Scarlet Fever and all of them died. And so he is now basically the last one left in his line. And it's been a long time since Willow and Alistair have seen each other and Willow is now visually impaired. She can't see at all, she's blind. Alistair now needs a wife and he ends up 
coming across Willow at a ball, but Willow's not the same person as she was all those years ago because she can't see anymore. Like she's had to go through a lot of things since she's lost it since, since she has lost her vision. This is about them reconnecting, but Alistair at the beginning is very upset with Willow because she essentially like broke his heart to save him from her family at the beginning. So there were just a few things in this book that I was a little confused by. If you want to know what those things are, you can check out that reading vlog. Um, tropes in here. You have damaged heroin, forbidden romance. It's a historical. There is disability representation. The heroine is blind. Um, it's on Kindle Unlimited. There's longing. We have a ruined heroine, a second chance romance, and there's a wedding in here. I gave this one a four out of five stars. I then read How to Entice an Enchantress by uh, Karen Hawkins. This is the third book in the Duchess Diaries series. I love this series so stinking much. So this is the romance between Dahlia and Lord Kirk. Essentially, Lord Kirk in here is Dahlia's next door neighbor, like next to her family home. They really connect over their love of books. He is a uh, widowed, scarred man. His wife and him were on a boat that had apparently explosives on it and she ended up dying and he is now heavily scarred. He's He also has a disability. His leg was very impacted by the blast that happened and so he has a bunch of skin damage and nerve damage and everything. He walks with a limp and with a cane. At the beginning of this book, we find out that he's kind of made a mess with Dahlia. Like <laughs> he said some things like while he proposed to her because he was like, oh, this woman loves books as much as me. Like, I feel like we'd be great companions in life. So how about I just marry her? And so he proposes to her kind of like the same way that Darcy does in the rain scene with Elizabeth in the Pride of Prejudice 2005 version where, um, she or his proposal heavily offends her and um she's just very offended by him and so she doesn't like him anymore and so he goes to his godmother who's the duchess in here um and he's like i need your help wooing this woman and so that's what they do and so all these books take place at the duchess's estate uh she hosts hosts a lot of house parties so this is about dahlia and lord kirk falling in love and i loved this i gave this five stars if you want to know more of my thoughts i literally go in depth so much about this book how much i loved it in that reading vlog. For uh, trigger ones in here, you do have ableism in here. There's some people who are very ableist in this book and making fun of Lord Kirk. Uh, for memorable quotes, we have a line at the beginning where where, <laughs> where Lord Kirk says, she's everything, damn it. And then towards the end, um, Lord Kirk says this line, it's so cute. It says, the truth is I can't leave you. You are a part of me, Dahlia, a part of who I am. Hmm, so cute. Tropes in here, you have book lovers, a brooding hero, there's groveling, Grumpy Sunshine, Historical, Romance with Disability Rep, Meddlesome Family Members, A Neighbor's Romance Never Been Kissed, A Recluse, Reluctant to Love, A Scar Character, and A Widower. I gave this book a five out of five stars. And the last book that I want to mention is Highland Spitfire by Mary Wine. Um, this is a historical romance that I read towards the end of the readathon. Um, and this is like a rivaling family's romance where there's two Highland clans that are rivals and the prince regent of the land is forcing the children of the leaders of the clan to marry each other. Very similar to Never Seduce a Scott by My Banks, but the characters are not as sweet and caring towards each other, <laughs> if that makes sense. Um, so I thought this was okay. I gave it a 3.5 out of five stars. Um, and if you wanna know more of my thoughts, you can go check out my reading vlog. But anyways, they have it. Those are books that I've read so far in May. Let me know down below if you've read any of these books or if you plan to. But anyways, thank y'all so, so much for watching. I will see y'all soon in my next one. Bye y'all.